We're going to look at the kinematic differential equations and simulating them using MATLAB. So there'll be a little MATLAB tutorial. Talked a lot about these kinematic differential equations, but we haven't integrated them yet. We haven't simulated them. So that's what we're going to do. Simulating these rotational kinematic differential equations. And I'm going to walk you through using MATLAB, but if you prefer Python and you can figure it out, that's great. I think Mathematica might be able to do it too, but I'm only going to talk about MATLAB. Plus I use a matrix and it's MATLAB because it's based on matrices. So we could do that. Well, I mean, there's the, the first one and I'm not going to simulate this, but you could actually just take the direction cosine matrix. Remember what that does? It, it represents how your rigid body is oriented or in particular how a frame attached to your rigid body is oriented with respect to some inertial directions. So this matrix we're calling C, if we use the explicit uh, frame labeling, it relates the B frame to the N frame. So that's how the book writes it. So this is a, uh, you've, you've seen this already, right? There's a, there'll be some angular velocity vector that could be changing in time. You turn that into that tilde matrix. So that is one way to simulate. Another way that we've talked about is using Euler angles. And we've talked about 12 sets of Euler angles. If, uh, if you use Euler angles, that means you've got a vector of angles. And the C matrix can be rewritten in terms of those angles, meaning you get the direction cosine matrix. Each of the entries is going to be some function of these three angles. And the kinematic differential equation uh, looks like theta dot as a column vector is some B matrix times the angular velocity written in the B frame. And so all these things could potentially be changing in time. That changes in time. Omega could be moving around and we write the omega vector with respect to the body fixed frame, the B frame. So I'll do this in MATLAB. And remember the B matrix was different for each of the 12 different types. Uh, three, we talked about, because there was a problem with the Euler angles that they have this singularity. They have places where there'll be you know, one over zero. And so the ODE goes to infinite and that leads to numerical problems. So another common type that's used is, it's either called quaternions or Euler parameters. The quaternion is the name of the four dimensional thing. Each of the entries is called an Euler parameter. So the book seems to prefer the term Euler parameters. It's hard to keep track of all these things with Euler's name attached to them. So you know, up here it's Euler angles, Euler, Euler, not equal, but Euler. And it's Euler, not Euler. Euler makes me think of the movie Ferris Bueller. Bueller? Euler? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, so there, it's Euler. It's Euclid, but then it's Euler. Euclid 2,000 years ago, Euler 200 years ago. So the Euler parameters are those B things. I mean, beta. The way the book writes it, it's got a beta 0 and then beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. And these came from the axis angle. And so we actually use these instead of the axis angle. You know, they, they come from that axis angle formulation. So there, there was a, an ODE that we mentioned, and it was one half some, again, a beta matrix, which will be a function of the betas times omega written in the body fixed frame. I don't know if this up here need to bracket around it. There we go. Where B beta look like that. That's just from the book. So you will do this for the homework. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this one now using MATLAB. MATLAB demo. I'll use yaw, pitch, and roll. So that means the three, two, one convention in the naming of the book. Some people might call it Z, Y, X, or Tate, Brian, or Brian Tate. I don't know why they keep making up new names, but you will hopefully forever remember it as three, two, one, because that makes sense. 
Makes sense. You rotate about the number three through some angle, and then the new number two, and then the new number one. In this order, the first angle is yaw, the second angle is pitch, the third angle is roll. So we'll use that, which means uh, we'll be in you know, this category two up here. And typically there, theta one, theta two, theta three are written as, um, so yaw is written as psi, pitch written as theta, roll written as phi. We'll have that. And this matrix equals something. Uh, what is that something? So that's it. But now we have to write ODEs. So we could write it in uh, matrix form. I think that's the easiest. Maybe I'll give you a problem statement, just like one of the, the problems that's in the back of that chapter. To, to demonstrate this, we're going to use problem 312. So here's problem 312. It says the initial yaw pitch and roll angles are 40, 30, and 80 degrees. And we're going to assume a form for the angular momentum. You know, later angular, uh, sorry, angular velocity. We're assuming a form for the angular velocity. Later, the angular velocity is going to come from rigid body dynamics, but just to test things out right now, we're gonna say this, this is the angular velocity. So this is omega written in the B frame and it changes with time. And the here uh, T, T is in seconds. And we're going to follow this from T equals zero to T equals uh, 60 seconds. Follow this for a minute. Find out what this gives. The initial yaw pitch and roll will be that, but it'll be changing in time according to this ODE up here with this as our beta or B matrix. And we have initial conditions. Everything though, however, needs to be, you must integrate these equations using radians as the angular units. So that's what we do for all numerics. For presentation purposes, it's sometimes common to list things in terms of degrees, but all of the numerics that are done need to be in terms of radians. Okay, so we need to even, what do we need? We will need to translate this into radians. We got degrees that need to translate this into radians. So we can do all that. Right, we just multiply by pi over 180. I guess you could think about where's omega gonna be pointing at time zero. Omega b in the body fixed frame at time zero is going to be zero, 0 0.01, uh, one. So it's gonna be pointing almost completely in the body fixed B3 direction. Just something to think about. And then this 20, we're gonna multiply that by what? Pi divided by 180. And then that'll give us radians per second. So if we're looking in the body fixed frame, if we use the usual convention of yaw pitch and roll where Z is pointing down, remember B1, B2, B3, that means that initially, you'll have a little bit in the B2 direction. So omega will be mostly doing this at time zero. And what, what does the omega vector mean? It is the instantaneous axis of rotation and its direction using the right-hand rule tells you the way that rotation will be happening. So instantaneously, this thing will be rotating almost about the B3 direction. So if I had, uh, and moving to the right, so if I have the shuttle and my, uh, if I'm starting out like this, the shuttle and then my omega zero is basically pointing down, then what has to happen? Um, using the right hand rule, this has to initially turn to the right. But of course, omega is also changing. So in general, because of this omega changing, there's gonna be some tumbling and it's gonna be pretty severe there's not a type of, it's not the shuttle that you want to be on. I'll tell you that, at least that's my suspicion. So we could do that. And at each moment in time, you know, out of this, we will get, we get a time varying yaw pitch and roll. 
So we'll get yaw, pitch, and roll, which we could plot. We could plot that. So we'll get, I don't know, something for each angle. Or we could try to view it uh, by animating it. I don't expect you to animate it. I'll do the animation just so you can kind of visualize what, what's, what's going on. All right, so let's, let's go to MATLAB. Uh, let me, something that shows how to, it's like a little how-to on writing differential equations or solving differential equations using MATLAB. Basically, we're gonna use ODE 45. It starts out with this, you know, simulating the pendulum as an example, and that the first step is you need to create a MATLAB function, and this just you know calls it my ODE fun. Just emphasize how fun it is, and then you'll call ODE forty five using some method. So it's not it's it's not that bad, and then you can plot. So we can honestly do this in a few lines once we've written the ODE function. So that's kind of the, the main deal. Uh, for right now, I want to move this out of the way. So go away. Okay, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in an empty folder right now. I think I can open or do a new, uh, so I have MATLAB 20 R 2020 B. This will probably be the same for any MATLAB version you have. But just be aware, live script? No, I want a function, function. It's opening it in my other screen, but here it is. It's got some things already here. What do we want? We want something. We're only going to have one output argument. And I'm gonna follow the pattern that the document does. So it calls the left-hand side of this y dot. Uh, let's just sort of, uh, I'll put something in, in there. We could put a description, I guess, if we really wanted to. I'm gonna call this, like it did in that thing, my ODE fun. And for using ODE 45, the first argument is T, the time. Second argument is Y. Y will be a vector. In this case, Y is going to be the Euler angles. So I could put in here, this integrates Euler angles. And what does it take as an input? Input is T in seconds. Y is um, a vector of yaw, pitch, roll. And then the output Y dot is time derivative. Yeah, pitch, roll, okay. So what goes in here? I have some freedom about how I do this. I'm first gonna define the angular momentum vector that was listed. I'll call it W, even though W is not omega, but you get the idea. So W is, what did I write? I wrote sine point one times T. That's the first entry, then point oh one and then cosine point one times t, close the brackets. Um, and this was all times 20 degrees per second, but now I'm gonna transform into radians by multiplying by pi divided by 180. And just to get this right, this the way I've written it, it's a row vector. I'm gonna turn it into a column vector just to, just to do it. So there it is. Okay, so we've defined, I guess we could put it up here if we want. Define the angular momentum as, a, I keep saying momentum, angular velocity, omega, as a function of time. And I'll just say, instead of omega, I'm writing W because they look about the same. What, what am I eventually gonna do down here? Maybe that helps. I'll be writing Y dot equals B times W. I've already got W. I've already got my omega. So now I need to write the B matrix. So the B matrix is gonna be a three by three matrix. And what does it use? If I, if I remember what it looked like, S2 is a sign of Y2. So remember Y2 is pitch. 
C2 is cosine Y2. S3 equals sine of Y3, sine of roll. And then C, no, that was S3. C3 is cosine of Y3. So I'm, this is just gonna be shorthand so that it's easier to write this matrix. So what is B? Maybe I'll do it this way. One, it's got one divided by C2 out in front times, now I'll just populate it. The first entry was uh, zero. And then I had S3 and uh, C3. The reason I'm putting all these weird spaces is because I, I like lining up the columns, makes it easier to see. Uh, the second one was also zero. And the second entry was C2 times C3. This was, move this over. So I give room for a minus, minus C2 times S3. Dot, 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 go to the next line. This was non-zero, C2. And then I had S2 times S3, uh, S2 times C3. That's it, that's what that matrix is. So now I've got something. This is the nice thing about MATLAB. So instead of doing Y dot one equals and working it out, you could just let the matrix multiplication work it out like we've been writing in the lecture. So this is this is it. This uh, this is sort of the heart of it. I need to save this. Um, it'll probably ask me, how do I want to save it? Yeah, I'll call it my OD fun. It's so much fun. There it is. Okay, then now what? Now I got to do now I have to run this. And I got to think about how I want to do that. I'm given some initial conditions. Maybe I'll say Euler, three, two, one, at time zero is, and the way I listed it was uh, the initial yaw pitch and roll was 40, 30, and 80 degrees. But of course, things must be transformed into radians. So this is times pi over 180. Okay, cool. Um, I like to write it the way I usually write uh, an initial condition. Yeah, so, so, so that's my initial condition. Wow, I don't need that. Format short E. Why not? And it, I, it doesn't really matter for using ODE45 if the uh, initial condition is written as a row or a column, just FYI. Okay, now is the meat of it, writing the, the integration part. This is the syntax for using ODE45. That'll be OD, uh, T comma Y equals ODE45. And then you put at and the name of the function. My ODE, I don't know if it, okay, good. I just sort of filled it out. My ODE fun, it's saying I need a T span. So a time span, I'm going from zero to 60 seconds and my initial condition why not because why not there's also room for if i wanted options those options are setting the integration tolerance which you know, makes uh, makes for a more accurate but also a slower integration like it'll take longer to do it i'm i'm just using the defaults if i use the defaults i can shut it off there and that's it there's other integration things, but ODE45 works fine. It's um, behind the scenes, it's using a Runga Kata fourth and fifth order integrator. So I'm just gonna press return. And what do you know? It's like basically instant, it's very quick. Okay. So if you're curious, what did this do? It gave me, uh, starting with the first point, I made another 112 time points in integrating this. So that's why it's 113 times what size of y 113 by three so the first column is yaw the second column is pitch the third column is roll so just to make life easier for me i'm going to say this extracts the first column yaw now i'll extract the second column for pitch and then extract 
the last column and call it roll. Um, what could I do with this? Well, I could I could plot this. So I'll type figure and it's moving somewhere where you can't see it, which isn't super helpful for you. But here it is, figure one. So over here, things will be happening. Um, I have a choice as to how I want to plot this. I could plot it. Remember, it's, it's it's automatically given in terms of radians, but for understanding it, it's kind of easier to plot it in terms of degrees. So I'll do plot t uh, yaw 180 divided by pi. And this might be a little bit hard to see. Like I think it's coming off the screen for you. So I'm actually able to see what you see. My the magic of computers. Okay. I kind of don't like MATLAB's defaults, but I mean, you could see the curve, I guess. But if it was up to me, there's these other things you could do, like line width. Like by default, it uses blue. Maybe you don't like blue. I'm wearing blue. I like blue. Um, line width five just makes a thicker line. It's like, yes, I can see it now, right? The grid. I don't like how the letters are just the smallest thing in the world, uh, but I'll deal with that later. First, I'll label the X axis, X label T, Y label, um, this is yaw, right? In degrees. And there's this thing set GCA means get current axes, set that font size uh, just to be bigger there. Okay, now it's like more legible. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine when people turn in plots with the tiniest possible default font and you can't even see it on slides and presentations. I'm like, what is, what is that? So like these are kind of extra bells and whistles. It's not necessary, but it helps you see it. Okay, so that's what the yaw did. As you can see, the yaw, I, I think we started out at 40, right? And according to that angular velocity vector, how it was changing, then this happened to the yaw, which looks kind of like, what? What's going on? Uh, we could do this again for pitch, just to get an idea. Maybe I'll put it down here. And I can adjust this, so, oh, look, it's tinier. Make this tinier. Like, we don't have to see all of them, do we? Maybe. Let's plot, yeah, pitch. Pitch is important because we want to make sure we stayed away from 90 degrees. Plus or minus 90 degrees is where the three, two, one Euler angles have their singularity. So things would look terrible there. Um, so I plotted it. Nice. X label. And if you, if you press the up arrow, I don't know if you know, it kind of just goes through things you've already written and makes life a little bit easier. Pitch, set. So pitch started out, what, small? 30 degrees or something? I don't remember. Yeah, it's through about 30 degrees and then it went down and then it went up and I have a hard time interpreting what's going on here. But it looks like it, it stayed away from 90. I guess we could even type min pitch times 180. Yeah. Okay, it went to negative 78. What about max plus 60? Okay, it stayed away from 90. So we weren't near the singularity. Super. Let's just do a final figure for completeness. And you could, if you're like savvy with MATLAB, then you know how to do. Uh, things like um, subplots, but so I'll put this here and we'll do the final one. Plot um, roll, not toll, roll, there it is. Grid, X label, Y label. Oh, I wrote pitch weird. And set so you could so it's legible. There we go. Check it out. So roll started out at 80 
and you're noticing this, you know, this is going way above 360, but that's okay. It'll map back. If you do any angle above 360, it just sort of does the appropriate angle. This just makes it look like it's rolling a bunch. You know, from this, I have a hard time telling what, what is this thing doing? I have no idea. Um, is it even accurate? I don't know. I don't know. But this would be it if you if you were given that problem three twelve, that's how you would do it, and you would you know provide these plots and you're done. I'll show you a video of what it looked like. So from that yaw pitch and roll, I can reconstruct the direction cosine matrix, and kind of like what I did before with the uh, showing the space shuttle. I'll show you the space shuttle as the rigid body and what it did. So this is the initial yaw pitch and roll that I was showing. And it's, you can't see it, but there's a time up at the top as the title. And if I let this play, you will see the crazy looking tumbling. Definitely not any space shuttle you want to be on. Ah, like that's, I'm showing it faster than real time, but you still don't want to be in this shuttle. If I also plot, this is the, I'm also plotting the angular velocity vector as orange. And sometimes it's easier to interpret than others. If I just play this, you'll see this angular velocity vector moving around, going every which way, causing all kinds of problems for these poor innocent astronauts. So I think at this moment, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit further, there, the angular velocity is almost pointed along the nose. So according to the right-hand rule, the, the space shuttle should be uh, rolling to the right just instantaneously. And if we go a little bit forward, it is rolling to the right, but then it rolls to the right a little bit and then angular velocity is in a different direction. So it's kind of hard. And now it's right, def directly behind, which means this thing, according to the right hand rule, it should be moving in another certain way, but the angular velocity is moving actually pretty quickly. So it's almost hard to interpret. I tried another initial condition. I just started it off at zero, zero, zero for yaw pitch and roll. So now our guess for what the shuttle will do, if you look at my video, my, here's the video of uh, the space shuttle. So instantaneously, according to the right-hand rule, if this is pointing down, if I'm pointing down, the shuttle should be turning initially to the right. Okay, it does. But then, then it gets really hard to interpret because this angular velocity is moving like crazy. According to this, weird sine and cosine thing that we gave it. Like I said, later we'll find out how si uh, how the angular velocity evolves in time according to rigid body dynamics. It's not just some prescribed function of time. It'll move according to dynamics and it becomes a coupled problem because how the angular velocity changes will depend many times on what your orientation is compared to other moments on this. This is just plotting what I had before for the yaw pitch and roll, but just putting them on the same plot using the sub plot command of MATLAB. You don't have to do it that way, but there it is. Now, I, I mentioned this singularity issue. I uh, played around and found some configuration that led to passing very, very, very close to 90 degrees. And this is what happens there. So in this case, let's see, am I able to use my pen? I think so. At about this time, I got really close to 90 degrees. So I don't know what time that is. I mean, you know, a little bit after 40. So maybe time 42. It got so close. And then notice what happens around that same time in the other angles. You get these discontinuous jumps. So 
I don't know why it's writing this so lightly. Did I did I do something wrong? So we had this. Oh, I'm writing like highlighter. Now well, keep doing it. Discontinuous jumps in the roll and uh, yaw near singularity in pitch. So that's why yaw, pitch, and roll are a problem, or any Euler angles, because if we have some arbitrarily changing angular velocity, then we're going to get to a pitch of 90. So if we have kind of large-scale tumbling, you don't always have large-scale tumbling. So if you know you're, you're not, these are, these are OK coordinates. They're, they're fine. But if you are going to be in some kind of arbitrary orientation, that's why you use the Euler parameters. And so your, your problem that you were given is, is very similar to this problem statement. Um, it starts with the same yaw, pitch, and roll. But instead of using Euler angles, you're going to transform from Euler angles into the beta parameters, the Euler parameters, and integrate those ODEs. And you won't have any singularities, but the tumbling will look the same. The tumbling would look just like this if you were to view it. Of course, what you'll get is just some plots of beta naught, beta one, beta two, and beta three that are like impossible to interpret. And then you'll take, uh, just to sort of see that your integration is okay, you'll um, plot the sum of them. So for your homework 4.3, you'll start with the same um, orientation same initial orientation, but you'll do the kinematic, you'll do the kinematic differential equations using Euler parameters. So that means you'll go from, you'll, you have yaw, pitch, and uh, this is as of time zero yaw, pitch, and roll, and they will be the same thing. I uh, forget what it was, like 40, 30, 80. And it's OK with uh, me if you use code that's been provided that goes from um, the Euler angles to directly to the the parameters. Hold on, there's a there's a question here. Uh, is psi theta one or theta three? Psi is theta one. Size, yeah. So this is theta one, theta two, theta three, because it's the first rotation. Yaw, pitch, roll. You do them in that order. And if you if we looked up here. Maybe, maybe you notice that when I wrote this in MATLAB, I just did, uh, I only used like theta two, which is theta, and theta three, which is phi. Because if you notice, all of these entries are just a function of theta two and theta three, not theta one. So they're not a function of the yaw, interestingly. I don't know if that's a pattern or just happened that way, but. Yeah. So that beta matrix was just a function of those two and not yaw. Although yaw, I mean, yaw will be changing because there'll be uh, yaw dot will be you know, this times this times omega one and omega, oh, omega two and omega three. So you'll, you'll have the Euler uh, angles. And I think there's something called there's a MATLAB file, Euler 3, 2, 1, uh, 2, EP. It's okay with me if you want to use that. And so then this will give you what the initial beta will be. 
if you're like, oh, I don't like using just pre-existing code. I want to do it myself. Okay, you can do that. The, I mean, you'll definitely have to write the differential equation, right? So now this becomes, if we write it as a vector beta naught, and then you could write a my ODE fun that goes through and integrates those. And you could do it in that matrix format, like I demonstrated here, or individually, if you're into that kind of thing, where you want to write the ODEs individually. What do I mean by that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you should probably just do the matrix one. I'll leave it up to you. I'm not going to tell you more. Try it. So integrate. You'll get a matrix uh, if you use the same kind of notation of T and Y. Instead of three columns, right? This is a four-dimensional thing. So you'll have four columns. Like part C asks you to plot uh, beta naught squared plus beta one squared plus beta th two squared plus beta three squared. And those are supposed to be equal to one. What you'll find is that, you know, here's one. And this will just be either kind of noisily around one or maybe slightly de decreasing, but it'll be very close to one if you if the integration is accurate and or if you didn't make mistakes, it should be close to one. That's at least a check that the integration is correct. We have, in some sense, no idea using the Euler angles if we did it correctly. There's no check. There's no nothing, no function of uh, yaw pitch and roll that we could compare to find out, are we getting this even close to correct? I guess we could, we'd have to do like the experiment or something. Uh, and make a space shuttle go crazy. The other plots will be like plot beta one as a function of time. And you'll get something that you have no idea if it's correct. It'll be between plus or minus one because all of these, all uh, beta, uh, beta i's where you know, i goes from zero, one, two, three. They're between minus one and plus one. So whatever this is, if you do like a plus one and a minus one, shouldn't cross those. We're not going to talk about really any other of these attitude coordinates. There are other attitude coordinates that the book talks about and that you may end up using in your career somewhere. Like the, uh, what is it called? The modified Rodriguez parameters, or what the book calls MRPs. Uh, it talks about other weird things, stereographic projections, higher order Rodriguez parameters, a myriad of things that frighten and confuse me. Uh, so I'm, you know, why would I go through that? You're not necessarily going to need them as far as I know. There's some called like the WZ. I don't know what that is. Most of these are based on just different ways of understanding the, the Euler parameters. One drawback of the Euler parameters is that there's four of them rather than three. So the modified Rodriguez parameters, there's, there's only three of them. So they're used for some things, but you can't really go wrong using the Euler parameters. And there's lots of algorithms uh, for attitude determination that will involve the Euler parameters. If we didn't say it, uh, the Euler parameters, and this is like an aside, mathematical aside. You might be going like, what is this even, what is this? This describes, this looks like, you know, x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared equals one. This equation, it describes the locus of points, a distance of one from the origin. In other words, something like a sphere. If it was x squared plus y squared equals one, we'd say, oh, this describes a circle, right? Uh, x squared plus y squared equals one is just a circle. And now I'll give you a word to impress your friends. 
Uh, this is also called a one sphere. Ah, okay. And if we had x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one, so this is a this is in fact a unit circle. Um, x squared plus y plus z squared equals one. That's the collection of points that are all a distance one from the origin in three space, which describes a sphere. So, whoa, look at that. Uh, how do we usually do this? X, Y, Z. And now I shall sketch a sphere. No, I'm just gonna sketch like a circle with some, maybe a ring or something. In common parlance, we call that a sphere. Mathematically, maybe you're picking up a pattern. This is called a two sphere. And that's about as far as I could draw. If I say X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared plus, and I'll just add a fourth axis and I'll just kind of do something crazy. X, Y, Z, W. Now we've got something that's, oh my goodness, I don't know. But it is just a distance one. And so this is called a, the book actually calls it a four-dimensional sphere. Uh, they're, not, they're not quite getting it, right? It's called a three-sphere. Why is it three sphere? This the 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 number in front kind of gives the dimension along the thing. So if I'm on this one sphere over here, you know, I can only move in one dimension, forward or backward. If I'm on this sphere, I could move, you know, one, that way or this way. If I'm on this sphere, I could move in somehow three different directions. Whoa, and that, it's still a sphere. Um so that's just kind of an aside. The Euler parameters are describing motion on a three sphere in the four dimensional spaces of beta, beta, and it calls them beta naught, beta one, beta two, beta three. Um, also note that uh, other, other works or books will call these Euler parameters. It'll just refer to them as quaternions. And I think it'll use Q and it'll write this as Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, which kind of makes more sense. But we're gonna stick with what the book has. And Q1, Q2, and Q3 equal beta one, beta two, beta three, and Q4 is equal to beta naught. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes when people talk about quaternions, will be this Q vector. And the ordering is different than how the book has done it with its betas. Just wanna let you know that. And there's a comment in the chat on how there's a, yeah, there's this really cool uh, YouTube channel, three blue, one brown, that has a nice video on describing quaternions if you wanna know more. So in some sense, every rotation can be written as a point on a three dimensional sphere or a three sphere. That's nice to know, I guess.